So good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining. Um, my name is Jessica. I'm the Marketing Communications Manager here at Homegrown. Nice to see quite a few new faces. So thank you very much for coming along. I am actually currently sat in Homegrown, which is very nice um, for me to be out the house and in the office, so to speak. Um, business as unusual, whatever that entails now. So for those of you that don't know, Homegrown, where John is one of our lovely ambassadors, we are a private members club for entrepreneurs, investors, and trusted business advisors, part of the Home House Collection. And we're very much about, about building communities, helping people along their entrepreneurial journeys, and connecting entrepreneurs with investors. So today we are going to be talking about the challenges of scaling up in the new normal. A few housekeeping things from me. We are recording the session as normal. We will be sharing it and we will also be following up with a diagnostics report, which I'm sure John will tell you a little bit more about when he starts off. Um, any questions, please do. I think we can keep it relatively informal. Um, please put your hand up, take yourself on mute and um, ask away, but there will be the opportunity for Q&A at the end. And I would just like to say a big thank you to John. He's been an incredible supporter of the club. And John, hand over to you. Thank you. Thanks, Jessica. Um, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks very much. Yes, uh, homegrown, lovely place. Um, uh, I highly recommend, if you don't know it, uh, if you're not a member, uh, to, to check it out. Um, uh, so um, I'd like to obviously to uh, to share my screen with you. Um, we're going to do Q and A at the end if that's okay. Do put um, uh, any questions you've got in the in the chat, um, and um, and then we'll uh, do it that way. Um, so hopefully you can all see my slides. If not, shout now, Jessica. Um, so we're going to cover uh, challenges of scaling up in the new normal. Um, and um, just a little bit about uh, me um, and, and, and the business first. Um, so I'll send you the slides, been around a bit. Um, uh, this, is, uh, th this is business number seven for me. Um, and uh, I trained as a strategy consultant. Um, so you'll find some of the things that, uh, that we got actually come from the original course that I did some, some uh, years ago. Um, uh, current business uh, is is this one, uh, boardroom advisors, um, and the short version is uh, we do part time uh, directors, that is both executive directors, so part time finance, marketing, and so on, even managing directors, uh, as well as chairs, NEDs, and so on. And we have over a hundred uh, advisors. They have all scaled businesses, so they're all kind of a bit like me. Uh, been around a few blocks, uh, got a few wrinkles, a few grey hairs. Uh, I always say the grey hairs here are. Are, are all mistakes and the missing ones up here um, are the really bad ones and uh, so some of my colleagues share some of those um, uh, attributes um, uh, so that's 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 kind of boardroom advisors um, right so we're going to have a look um, first of all we're going to break this uh, into some sections and we're going to first look at uh, strategies strategic direction um, uh, we're focusing obviously on on, on, on on the current situations we're coming out of uh, coming out of covid um, so why why strategic direction at all well as the slide says it gives your organization clear purpose and objectives without it you kind of drift along I guess everybody knows that um, strategic analysis and we're going to look at one or two tools in order to help strategic analysis um, we, we have a crisis assessment tool, which is something that we, we, we've developed uh, for, uh, for the COVID situation, but can be used uh, in, in any crisis type situation. Um, uh, so that's, that's kind of new, you probably won't have, well, you won't have meet, uh, seen that before. Uh, something you will have seen before, and that's SWAT, uh, kind of most people know that, um, uh, maybe old, but uh, has, has, still has some good uses, I think. Um, and one you may not have come across again, um, which is most analysis. Um, so we're, we're going to quickly look at three of those tools um, and uh, what do they do? They help companies, organizations get from where they are now to where they want to be. And 
particularly in, in, in today's climate. And it's, it's a matter of perhaps of reassessing. Uh, you may well have done uh, some strategy work, um, got a plan in place, but now is obviously a great time to, to reassess and have a look in the, in the new climate. Um, and obviously, uh, strategy is the uh, single most important thing that we help uh, our clients with and, and board advisors generally do. Okay, so let's uh, get straight into it. Um, so um, the crisis uh, strategy assessment. So it's really just asking yourself a number of very simple questions. Um, but by doing so, you reassess where you are and where you might want to go. So first of all, uh, the easy bit, really defining the crisis in one sentence. Well, I, you know, current crisis, we, uh, we, we know it's, it, it, it's, it's COVID, call it, call it what you like, but that's, that, that's what it's all about. Um, and so what's likely to change in the world? And there's been a lot of people you know, talking on podcasts and on TV and, and, and so on. Um, what will change in, in, in the world, do you think? There are a number of issues. Uh, remote working is an obvious one, but there's lots of other things that, that, that may change. Travel, uh, hospitality, lots of different things. But perhaps, you know, like peeling away the layers of an onion, um, what's likely to change in your industry as a result of those changes in the world? Um, and think what, uh, uh, how that might affect your company and your revenue streams. Does it make the way you do business at the moment uh, more or less effective? Are those revenue streams going to be more or less? And how might it change your value proposition? And we'll come to value proposition later, which I, I'm, I'm a great fan of nailing the value proposition. Um, but what your value proposition may have been pre-COVID and then post-COVID may well have changed. Our certainly has, and I'm, uh, I'll cover that a bit later. Um, and how might it alter your customer segments and relationships? So are some of your customers um, or, or clients, if you're a service industry, um, are some of those segments going to be more productive for you or less productive, or you're not going to be able to service them very well, or um, just it's thinking through those segments and the relationships that, that, that you might have. Um, and, and, and what about the distribution channels and your partners? Again, are some of those channels going to be more productive or less productive? Just thinking things through. And what about your resource needs? The, the obvious one is, 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 is offices. Um, do you still need an office? If you have one, we don't. At Boardroom Advisors, we're, we're a completely virtual business, uh, always have been. Uh, I hope we always will be. Uh, but uh, most companies have an office of sorts. Do you still need it? Do you need less of an office? Do you need it at all? Uh, well, and what about other resources? Um, that could be staff, it could be funding, it, it, it could be anything. So it's just thinking it through. And what about your cost structure? Um, and how's that going to be affected? So it's really just, you know, we've all been doing this kind of subconsciously um, as COVID's gone along, what's going to change in my life personally and what's going to change in my business life. But it's just kind of doing it in a more structured way. That's, that's all it is. The questions here, most of them are relatively obvious, um, but it's just doing it in a structured way. And um, uh, we, we have some forms which help you fill these sort of things in in a structured way. Um, and uh, so it's a crisis strategy uh, assessment. Uh, and you can see that the, the questions that are just covered here uh, and you can fill your answers in. And it's just something that you can do for yourself. Um, you can share with your team um, uh, what, 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 whatever suits. Um, and I'll show you how to get this tool and the other tools uh, in, in a moment. Once you've, you've done a crisis uh, strategy assessment, um, then perhaps it's looking at um, uh, a SWOT analysis in order to take some of those issues and reassess what your internal strengths and weaknesses and your external opportunities and threats are. But not looking at it perhaps with the old glasses, but with the new glasses. Um, 
uh, what are your strengths in the current circumstances and your weakness in the current circumstances? What new opportunities are there? I mean, any crisis pulls out some, some fabulous opportunities. And for us, uh, we were um, uh, completely regionally based uh, with our advisors going in to see clients in, in their premises. Well, COVID came along and we had to completely reassess that. What was the opportunity for us? The opportunity was suddenly we could be anywhere in the world um, uh, in an instant on Zoom. Um, I'm now having I don't know, seven Zooms a day, sometimes in several different countries. And in the UK, we're advising clients, and we have been advising clients for, for about a year or so, mainly by Zoom. And actually, if we can do that in the UK, of course, we can do that with our advisors that we have. We've got over 100. We can do that anywhere in the world anywhere in the world. It's a fabulous opportunity for a business like ours. Um, but it also, you know, there, there are some threats out there. Um, so it's, it's just having a reassessing, and, and you may well have done a swap your own business some time ago. Just my suggestion is do it with, with a new pair of eyes. Um, we talk about beer goggles, let's, let's put COVID goggles on and, 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 and redo swaps. <laughs> Um, and again, you know, we have, we've got a, um, a, a set of simple tools um, uh, which uh, you can download uh, in order to do a, a SWOT analysis. Um, and I'll, again, I'll show you in a minute um, how to do that. Now, those two tools are great in the sense that they pull, pull issues out and they put them on the table, uh, which, is, which is good. Um, you can't, you know, it's a great starting point. Um, one of the great weaknesses of, of, of SWOT in particular, of course, is that it doesn't do anything with them. Um, it, you know, it's self-analysis and it says, well, okay, you know, there's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, but it doesn't actually take them forward. It doesn't do anything with them. So um, one of the tools that, uh, that, that we use when I were trained as a, uh, as a strategy consultant a few years back uh, was most analysis. Most is really good. It's not, you know, SWOT is a simple tool. Um, uh, most appears to be, because it has, you know, four letters and all the set, you know, it appears to be simple, but it's not. Um, it's, it's a bit more, it's not complicated. It's just, it's like onion. It's, it's got layers to it. Um, so it just needs treating with a little bit more care than, than SWOT, but a really useful tool in order to take the issues that have come out of SWOT and to do something with them. Um, and to take them forwards. So I'll just quickly talk you through this. Um, uh, mission stands for, uh, sorry, I'll start again. Most stands for mission, objectives, strategies, and tactics, as you can see. And you start uh, bottom left-hand corner with a mission and you go round uh, clockwise uh, following things through. So you start with a mission. Um, uh, we do this with clients uh, and we facilitate this process, but you can do it by yourself. It's not quite as effective, obviously, but um, you can do it, get a clean sheet of paper. Um, by mission, I, I, I mean, it says organization's purpose. That's probably not a terribly good description. Um, I find it works best if, if it's done as, um, as hard business facts. So, uh, sales, turnover, um, and, and profit, and, and focusing on those big numbers, because everything else is kind of detail after that. So how many staff and regions around the world and all this sort of stuff, they're, they're kind of subsets. So I, I suggest stick to the big picture, you know, perhaps start with where you are at the moment. So, you know, what are your current sales? That is post COVID sales, not pre COVID sales. Um, uh, and what's your profit? And then have a look at the, the mission going forwards. Uh, you have to choose a time scale. Uh, one year is good. Three years is also good. Five years, probably a little too long in today's world. Um, some people will use two time scales, one and three. But in those time scales, what are your targets for your sales and your profit? And, and just keep it nice and simple at, at that sort of level because it gives a sense of scale to everything else that, that, that you have to do. So for example, 
uh, if if all you want to do is to stabilize the company and you know perhaps increase sales by five percent over three years well actually you don't need to do very many things in order to 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 keep steady as she goes if however you want to double your sales in a year you have to do a heck of a lot of stuff in order to 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 move the dial so what the mission does it, it gives you a sense of scale and that's the most important thing and and my suggestion is don't overthink it don't give it too much detail sales and 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 profitability um and then you move round the clock face um and so if 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 those are your if that's your business mission um what are the objectives what are the key goals that will help achieve the mission you'll find that all of these things tie together and that's why it's really quite important um and it's actually really difficult to think of objectives in midair it's it's a bit nebulous so the best way of doing this is to go back to your SWOT analysis and to say okay what are the you know that you don't need too many otherwise you can you know have too much detail again um keep to the big picture perhaps what's the you know one big strength we must hang on to or or you know our, our business kind of lacks lacks something serious um uh what are a couple of big weaknesses that we really need to fix these are internal things both strengths and weaknesses um opportunities a couple of uh what, what are the best two opportunities uh out there um and and then perhaps uh, one threat so there you are i made those numbers up that's that's six objectives um so what you're restating what you've done in your SWOT analysis as an objective, but you're restating it as an objective. So what does that mean? It means um, you, you have to turn it around. So if you have a weakness, uh, you have to turn that weakness into a strength. So if, uh, let's take an example. Um, if you have a perceived weakness, um, uh, you're, you're perceived to be financially weak. Um, uh, then turn that round to an objective and the objective would be to increase the perceived strength of your finances okay you turn it around from a weakness into into an objective but then you you kind of couple it with, with with a which will so what will that do it has to achieve something otherwise it's not really an objective um so why are you doing it you know so, so you change the increase the perceived um, strength or, or weakness of our uh, financial position, which will enable us to get bigger clients. Do you see what I mean? It's, it's turning it round, but it's why you're doing it. Um, so, so that's objectives. You go from the SWOT, take the big issues, convert them into objectives. Um, and then for each one of those, each one, you move round the clock face um, and you're looking for strategies um, of uh, what you're going to do. Strategies are options. Strategies are what. So, if for if the in the example that we had, uh, if your uh, perceived financial strength um, needs uh, needs increasing, uh, what are the options? What can you do? And 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 strategy can be really. Um, creative and this is this is the part I, I really love so you know perhaps around a table um, with your co-directors or, or whatever your situation is brainstorm normal brainstorming rules no criticism uh, not too much analysis get ideas out whack them on the board um, analyze them afterwards um, but it, I'll just throw a couple of suggestions you you want to um, in, increase the perceived strength of your financial position. What is it that you can do? Well, you might um, uh, you might want to hire a part time finance director. Not that I'm biased, of course. Um, you might want to uh, raise some funding. There's just a couple of ideas. There's you know there's ten or a dozen ideas you can come up with. So you brainstorm those ideas. You get them on the whiteboard or, or piece of paper, whatever it is. 
And then only after you start to run dry, do you start to analyze them, um, cut them down, join two of the weaker ones together to make a strong one, that sort of thing. And you're really trying to find one option, possibly two at the most, but certainly one for each of those objectives. Um, so that's, you're going to do something. Suddenly we've gone from a, a swap, which lays it all on the table and doesn't do anything. Suddenly we're doing things. So, okay, uh, you know, you're going to, um, uh, you're going to do some stuff. So um, who's going to do it and, and, and how is that going to be put into place? Well, that you move around the clock face to tactics. So if, for example, you're going to get a part-time finance director, uh, who's going to organize that? Perhaps that's the chairman. Perhaps he's going to investigate that. Um, uh, so it's who's going to do it um, uh, and, and, and by when. Um, uh, so you have a time scale on there. So perhaps in the next month, uh, he has to investigate some, uh, some options for getting a part-time finance director. So for each one of those strategies, you've got some tactics. And these tactics go on people's uh, to-do lists. So if you follow it round on the clock face, if people do things on their to-do list, they start to achieve some of the strategies. And if some of those strategies work, then some of the objectives may be achieved. And if some of those objectives are achieved, actually you've got a chance of getting to your mission. So the whole thing hangs together from start to finish. Now, it isn't a magic wand. Some things are going to go wrong. Uh, you're not necessarily going to choose the right strategy. Um, but it gives you, most analysis is great because it gives you a place to go back to. So you say, well, look, you know, the tactic isn't working. You know, we haven't got a, we haven't fi found a, a part-time financial finance director or, or perhaps we have, but, but, oh, he wasn't the right guy. Well, you can go back to that point and say, well, was it, was it the right strategy? And well, perhaps it was the right strategy, but the wrong person. Well, maybe you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater and you find somebody else who is a better fit. Um, or perhaps you might say, well, actually, no, he was a good guy, but, but we got that wrong. It really, it's not moving the dial for us. So, but you can go back to the other strategies, the other options that you looked at at that stage and say, well, okay, let's reassess that list. Were there better options in hindsight? Um, so you can go back at every stage to reassess the strength of, of, of what you chose, uh, choose alternatives if you're down the wrong path. And it stops the blind alley of, oh, well, we tried that, it didn't work. Uh, that was completely wrong. Well, it may not have been completely wrong. It may have only been partially wrong. So most analysis hangs it all together and does stuff. Um, and, and we work with clients uh, all the time uh, on that. So most analysis, again, we've got a, a, a simple uh, spreadsheet type tool in order to do this. Um, and of all of them, this is the most useful. Uh, they are simple little spreadsheet type things, but actually because you might have half a dozen or so objectives and tactics and, and strategies and, and so on, it, it can get a bit multi-layered. So these sheets are really useful in, in terms of helping you get through that particular process. Now, all of these tools, um, so that is the crisis assessment tool, the, the uh, a SWOT uh, uh, analysis sheets, and these most analysis sheets can all be found on our website. Um, uh, and I'll show you, this is the home page. The arrow is pointing to our resources uh, section. Um, and uh, under that resources section, you'll find a business strategy toolkit. Um, and uh, on that particular page, if you scroll down that page, um, then, then there's a free download. Um, so you can access all of those tools. Okay, so uh, that's kind of business strategy. So section one. So Kind of section two on this is we're talking about growth. Um, so we want really to look at some of the detail of some of the uh, growth strategies that you might have. And for business growth, it's, it's, it's again, 
trying to break it into some sections and and the first of these is is re-establishing the brand in the new climate what does it mean um so you're redefining your customer needs are your customer needs still the same in post-covid they may well be that's that's fine um have a look at your value proposition we'll come to that in a second in a tiny bit more detail um uh, and what about the messaging that you're putting out into the market which should be consistent with your value proposition um, and, and re-looking at your product if it's suitable for the uh, current situation um, and, and, and developing the brand in the new um, uh, climate. So re-establishing the brand is all about what is it that you're selling um, and, and to be very clear. And one of the um, useful little tools here, gosh, these are simple, aren't they? But I, I, I love simple tools because it, um, this this particular one is trying to trying to uh, this is the the baseline for working out your value proposition. So you 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 start bottom left. Um, what is it in your marketplace that everybody has? Um, and you just state the various things, um, and then you go uh, bottom right. So what's weaker in my company compared to the competition and in the new climate? Um, you move up top right. What's stronger at my, in my company? Again, in the new climate and compared to the competitors. And then out of that list of what is stronger, top left, what is it that's unique to my company? Um, and I mean unique. And so you have to start moving away from the phrases like uh, you know we're the best and uh, brilliant customer service and and kind of it, brilliant customer service may 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 be an issue but um, moving away from um, things like we're the best and um, uh, it's it's you you want more concrete things um, you want things that people can nail and people that your sales and business development people can can shout about. Uh, and shout about with confidence. And it helps to start on that bottom left um, because it just helps you through the, the thought process. Um, people often find uh, they get to top left and struggle with what's unique to my company or put things in there that aren't really unique, that actually lots of people have them or some people have them. Um, try and limit that that top left to properly unique. And you'll find most companies find it's quite difficult um, to nail exactly what is completely unique. And perhaps there isn't anything that's completely unique. And perhaps you need to have a think about strengthening some, some, uh, some of the benefits that you offer so they are unique um, because people buy unique propositions. Um, and if you're a me too proposition, then guess what? You're going to be competing on price. Um, and, and, and that's not necessarily the most profitable way of doing it. From, from the unique to my company section, um, then you can start to build a value proposition. Um, and so what is a value proposition? Um, it's really the end benefit that you're offering in one short sentence and this is kind of what's different about your business or 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 what is it think of an, a very short elevator pitch um ours is we provide real world board advisors to scale up businesses is that completely unique uh partly unique i think it's 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 certainly stronger with us um uh, there are unique bits but they probably come into the supporting points which is, is really useful you know, one sentence never quite covers it. Um, but if I'm in a networking situation, you know, somebody says, John, what do you do? I say, well, board of advisors, we provide real world board advisors to, to scale up businesses. And people kind of get it in that bit. Hopefully they'll then say, well, you know, what does that mean? And I'll start asking a few questions. So, so we have supporting points and I suggest it would be useful for your business to have them too. Ours are, there's no recruitment fee, no long-term contract. We're completely flexible. Um, all our advisors have scaled businesses. So these are very, uh, these are actually probably more unique than our, um, um, our, our headline. 
Um, so it's not necessarily simple, but it's working out what, what your proposition is to the marketplace. And then thinking about how later on will come, how you take your value proposition and how you get that messaging out into the marketplace. We did a really, um, I thought useful, um, uh, session with a with, with a client, we 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 nailed their overall uh, company value proposition to their satisfaction, and then we looked at they had three very different marketplaces, so we had three slightly different value propositions for each of their customer bases, and then we suggested to them, and it worked really well, that they use these three value propositions for their three different sectors as the landing as, as the content for the landing pages on their website for those three client bases um, and it means one of my great bugbears is going onto somebody's website and you don't know instantly what it is that they do and a value proposition using that on your website is a great way of doing it but probably in most of the communication tools that you have because um, otherwise you're not getting the message over clearly to everybody um, so um, other um, areas to look at in, in terms of growth, obviously lead generation. Um, and again, thinking with the new normal, what is it that needs to be different? Are, are there different decision makers there? Um, uh, what's the process? Again, look at your customer segmentation, has that changed? Um, and the routes to the market, are you, are you still going to go direct? Are you still gonna go through partners? Are you, uh, you know, what are your marketing channels? Um, and, 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 and partnering uh, in today's world, it's very difficult, I think, in today's world to do everything in isolation, but my instinct is even more so uh, post-COVID. And one of the things that we've done at Boardroom Advisors is, um, is, is work much harder at uh, working with partners um, and partnering with people, not, not necessarily channel partners who are going to sell our products, but, but partners who might get us exposure and coverage and uh, get us in the right place um, and, and indeed homegrown is, is exactly one of those. Um, so with partnering, um, what is it you're looking to achieve? Um, is, it, is it hard leads, is it distribution, is it exposure? Um, and, and, and a partner, not necessarily a channel partner that is selling your products, but a, a partner is more, it, it's, it, should, it must be a win-win. So what do you bring to the table? What is it that your partner might be able to bring to the table? Uh, and is this going to be an equal balance? What is it you bring? Uh, for us, we have, we have content, um, so better insights is probably the nearest fit for us. But for others, it might be technology or different audience or, uh, or, or whatever it is. But be clear about what it is you bring to the table because if you're talking to partners, you need to present that as a benefit to them or they're not gonna partner with you. Um, so, and maybe think through who makes a good partner. Um, having a similar audience is, is, is ideal. And we partnered with, with Homegrown for exactly that reason. Homegrown is all about entrepreneurs um, and, and all of our clients are entrepreneurs. A lot of, our, a lot of the investors who invest in our clients are, are entrepreneurs. So it's a very similar audience. And, and so that's why it was a very good fit. Again, with Homegrown, we're not competing. So there's a members club um, and, and we provide part-time directors. There's no competing there at all. Um, but complementary services. Um, do, do, does your partner have good content and events? Um, um, and, and what about their reach? Uh, are they active on social? Do they put it out there? If you, partner with somebody that keeps it under, under a rock, that's not gonna be a great idea, is it? Um, and why are they, why might they be interested in partnering? Do, are, do you share similar objectives? If you're after hard leads, are they also after hard leads? You need to kind of, it, there needs to be a match, doesn't there? Um, and some examples of the sort of things that we're doing, um, we have uh, a number of diagnostic tools. I'm gonna to come to um, uh, some of our best ones in a moment. Um, and, and we often share those with partners. And um, I think Jessica is going to be sharing those uh, with you following this. Um, uh, thank you, Jessica. Um, 
So we share those tools and we dual brand them for, for, for partners. And because those tools are our, our IP and they're unique, therefore that's something that we very much bring to the table because really hardly anybody else has that sort of thing. Other people have tools, but you know, sharing them uh, with other people is, is kind of different for us. Uh, we do joint webinars and seminars like this. Um, and we always, always do them with partners. Why? Because it's a shared audience and actually an extra audience. So we bring some people and, and, and homegrown in this example have brought some people to this webinar. So, so that's good. Guest blogging, uh, we find very important. Um, a, it gets us out there. It gets some knowledge um, to, our, to our partners, um, uh, client or customer base. Um, it gets some referral traffic. People follow the bio or a link within the blog uh, and perhaps go to our website. And of course, there's a Google um, uh, benefit as well uh, because there's a link uh, between the two sites. So there's, that's multifaceted, really. Um, and, and we do our content uh, technical, technically, we do it. Um, uh, I do it, and the regional directors uh, in Baldwin Advisors do it. But then we also have writers um, who, who give it a makeover to make it much more readable and, and, and probably more interesting. Um, uh, newsletters and, and, and mailings, um, uh, often it's a way of pointing at some of the things that we're doing. And, and Jessica's very kindly pointed in the last newsletter to, to, to this webinar as an example of, uh, of that sort of thing. Uh, we promote uh, through social media and both Jessica and I have promoted this through, through social uh, separately and together. Um, so, so, so that's good. We have an introducer scheme. So uh, the finance market do a lot of this uh, stuff really. So if people bring us a, a lead, we'll reward them. Um, and then we have a partner page uh, on our site and there's logos on the page and uh, a little couple of sentences and then a link through to their, their website. Um, and uh, it, it's nice that, that partners do the same in reverse for us. If you go to do a partnership, you, you know, it's, it, it's making it work is, is a good idea. Um, and then, as I mentioned earlier, communication tools. Um, how are you getting all this information out there, not just the partnering, but your uh, value proposition, um, how are you getting out there uh, in, in the marketplace? And is it consistent? Um, the, um, one of the things that we did, I mentioned earlier, um, uh, the tools that we, we share with some partners, um, but it's very useful um, in, in its own right, particularly on, uh, on growth. Uh, and this is a scale up growth diagnostic, particularly relevant for, 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 for this webinar and, and for the audience uh, that's here. Um, so this is something that we've developed ourselves. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's 30 questions um, divided into uh, various section, uh, um, business, um, uh, marketing and, and sales. Um, and it's self-diagnosis, um, but there's a report and recommendations that come out at the end. There's a um, strengths and weaknesses and a, and a to-do list. Um, and, and you get a, get a report um, from that. And it just enables you to, again, think the process through and, and, and confirm to yourself perhaps what it, what, what it is that needs work on. Um, and again, you can find that, this is again our homepage. Again, it's on the resources, resources section. Um, you just click on there um, and you get to the scale up growth diagnostic. And then within that, on that page itself um, is, is diagnostic tool. Um, and you just click the start button uh, and, and go and you fill in your contact details and, uh, and then you can answer the questions. You get, as I say, report and recommendations um, uh, coming, coming to you uh, by email from that. Oh, right, um, grabbing breath. Um, so that's kind of, um, kind of the slides that I wanted to run through today. Um, I'm kind of hoping there might be some, some, some questions coming up in a second. Uh, so uh, if you're thinking you might ask something, then perhaps uh, formulate that. Um, in the meantime, 
do please uh, add me on, on LinkedIn. You'll find me as John G. Courtney. It's a bit American, I know, but it sets me aside from all the million John Courtney's out there. Um, so, uh, and you can always contact me. Uh, there's my email and uh, the web address. Um, so uh, that's kind of me done, Jessica. Um, Lovely. Do you, well, um, perhaps as Q&A goes on, um, if you want to unshare your screen so we can see you, that'd be lovely, but that was really, really useful. Thank you. Um, I have a quick question around partnerships and we're actually, I mean, as a club, we're two years old. We're part of the collection, which is um, well, nearly 25 years old. Um, but as far as a club for entrepreneurs and investors, we're still, we're still you know, a fairly new business. Yeah. And, and I'm really focusing on our partnerships at the moment and building um, building affiliations. Um, so it was really great to hear some, some of those aspects. But as a rule of thumb, do you think there's like a set amount of partnerships that are ideal? Do you think you can overload um, your company with partnerships? And it was actually quite good to go, why are we actually doing this partnership? What, what's the point? Um, and does this depend on the company size? Okay, yes, yeah, so, so a couple of good questions there. Uh, so, so first of all, yes, making sure that you've, you've, you've thought through why, you get, why you're doing it. Um, otherwise, it, it, you know, you can go down a couple of blind alleys. So be, be clear, is it leads, is it, is it exposure? Uh, for you, I guess, the, the eventual goal is more members for homegrown, but, but it doesn't have to go, yeah, it doesn't have to go straight there. It can be about general exposure in the right marketplace and who's got the same audience and, and so on and so forth. Um, but, but obviously that's very important. Um, yeah, you, you can have too many partners. Um, be, if you spread yourself too thin, you'll find that you don't do many things with, mm. with those partners. You know, there's only so much time in the day. Um, and and I'm, I'm a firm believer, I mean, I've tried to do partnering and, and done it badly uh, for decades. Um, and, and the key for me is, is about doing things with those partners, finding the right ones in the first place, but then doing stuff with them. If you do stuff with them, actually you're in constant communication with them. You're putting things out to their audience and your audience, um, and it's actually moving it forward. And that's, that's the key. So to answer your question again, if you have too many, you're gonna perhaps spread yourself too thin um, and then you're not going to do as many things with any one partner and then those partnerships aren't going to be that successful. Um, so one of the things you and I have done, I, I, I think quite well, Jessica, is that we've, we've done several things. So we've done some webinars, yeah. uh, have we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, so, and that's nice, and, um, uh, and, and you've got me on the website, and we're doing some social, and we're doing several things together, and I think all of those things, they kind of, they work together. Yeah. Um, so again, if you have too many partners, too thin, you only do one or two things, it's not going to move it forward. So better, better fewer and deeper, I think, okay. if that makes any sense. Useful, thank you. And just on the partnerships front, we will be sharing the growth diagnostic um, health check as well, um, just on that front. So over to the audience, does anybody have anything that they would like to ask John? We will of course connect you anyway, but if you have anything now, please do fire away. There's nothing specific, but thanks John, appreciate the overview. Thanks Adrian. Colin, you had something? Sorry, you're on mute, Colin. Try again. Yes, yeah, I've unmuted. Thank you. Thank you for an excellent presentation, John. <clears throat> the, the, the question I have is, okay, there are there are casualties with new businesses. What's 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 the failure rate with scaling up businesses? Ooh, good question. I, I I don't have stats or data to 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 give you, Colin. Um, my my own personal experience is that. Businesses, particularly early stage businesses that are that are, that are scaling up, uh, um, you know, my 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 son James, who's who's often in home growing, is it's kind of one of these guys. He's about to go Series A funding, um, and and those types of you know tech startup, late startup, early scale up type people, they tend to be as a generalisation, they tend to be very creative, 
um, and very flexible. They're, 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 they're constantly reinventing their model or um, flexing their model. Um, and so when you get, you know, a, a, a bolt out of the blue like COVID has been, those sorts of people are, are perhaps a little bit more fleet of foot and, 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 and flexible than perhaps a business that's been doing the same thing for a hundred years. Um, and, and actually their whole market may be shot to pieces or they, they've got to completely rethink what they do, but they've never gone through that process. Um, whereas some of the newer businesses, they're doing that process all the time. Uh, you know, they'll go to a scale, they'll go to a, um, uh, uh, an incubator or an accelerator um, and the incubator and accelerator will ask them lots of piercing questions and they'll pivot their business. So this is, this is what we're all now having to do with COVID. We're all having to pivot our business, question what it is, how it is that we're doing it. And does the business need to change? Does it need pivoting? It may not, not every business does. And some have been unaffected by COVID. Some have actually benefited from, from the COVID situation. You know, Zoom, for example, is, uh, has, uh, has done extremely well. Um, but, but others like, I mean, home house can't, uh, and homegrown can't have done terribly well when, you know, people aren't using the facilities and eating in the restaurants and, and, and so on. So there are winners and losers, but the guys who I think will do best are those who are nimble and fleet of foot and, and those are likely to be um, the, the, the late um, startups and, and, and scale up type businesses. But I don't have data to, to give you, Colin, I, I'm, I'm sorry, that's just kind of anecdotal. I, I don't know, what do other people think? Adrian? Can you unmute no. yourself? <laughs> it's still oh. happening all the time. <laughs> it's it's, 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 it's a, the new fashionable thing from uh, uh, Zoom calls, yes. I would suggest there probably isn't actually any data because uh, scale-up isn't a success or, or failure binary issue. If you were planning to grow 20% and you actually grew 15%, have you succeeded or failed? It would be possible to obtain data showing uh, specific groups of companies that have achieved specific growth rates. Uh, that kind of data is, is available if you know where to look. But it, there is no such thing as um, overall success or failure of, of scaling up. It, it's, not a, it's not a category into which companies fall and can be counted. Yeah, good points. And yeah, I, th there is a technical definition which the Scale Up Institute uh, gives us. But, but you're absolutely right. Um, growth. Um, and, and coming out, what, what I'm trying to, what I was trying to do in this in this webinar is is basically to get people, and, and we've had to do it with our own business, Jessica with hers, reassess where you are, how you're going to do things, and and the ship may continue to sail in the way that it has done, um, but it may not, and so it's just thinking through that process using some of the tools perhaps that that that, that, that I've shown or or other tools. There's loads of different tools out there. I've uh, I've run quickly through three of them, but um, uh, there's lots of really good management tools. They're there for a reason, because actually strategy um, or business strategy or growth strategy, unless you have a tool, it's very difficult um, to, to, to do top of the head without, without you know, you've got to have something to hang your hat on. So you need a coat, coat rack in order to hang your hat on. If that's, I'm mixing all my metaphors now. I think it's just worth also noting that it's not too late to be reevaluating. There's a lot of people have gone, oh, lockdown one, lockdown two, and they're like, oh, we should be, you know, absolutely right now. But actually, there's going to be lots of companies that are still, still learning, still, you know, getting education from the changes that we've been through. I mean, you know, we're just about to open again on the 17th of May. That doesn't mean we're going to be open and everything, you know, every restaurant seat is going to be filled and we're going to fill our membership capacity. Of course not. Um, so, yeah, that's been useful. Yeah. And um, and, 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 and uh, you're, you're, you're right. It's um, it, it's not binary. I, I do believe my my personal gut feel and instinct 
for what that's worth, um, is that uh, is that we're going to see the Roaring Twenties again, a um, hundred years on. Um, the uh, GDP was down, I think it was roughly 10% uh, during COVID though. Um, the forecasts are for a 5% for a growth this year and a further 5% growth next year to bring us back to where we were uh, pre-COVID. My instinct is that it will, the growth will be more than that. Um, there was a lot of pent up stuff, wasn't there, with uh, not just COVID, but, but with Brexit um, and a, a lot of pent up orders, a lot of um, pent up business that needed to be done. Um, I don't know, do people agree or, or disagree? Uh, am I being over hopeful here? To totally agree, Michelle. Well, there an awful lot of people haven't spent a lot of money. Um, and that, that's tucked away and that's going to come out big time, aren't it? Yeah, I agree. I think most things have been delayed rather than cancelled. Yeah. So things still need to be done. Well, let, 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 let's hope that's the case and let's hope it, 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 it goes a bundle. Um, any more questions, guys, before we wrap up? Um, Mark? Yeah, can I just ask a, a question around boardroom advisors, if I may? Um, yes. how, if, if one was looking for a director with specific industry experience, would that be something that you would be able to sort of have a conversation around? Yes, um, and, and we're always asked that question. Almost every potential client says to us, well, do you have anybody who knows about our industry? Um, uh, because everybody wants somebody that's relevant and, and so they're not having to teach teaching them how to suck eggs mm. from, from the word go. So, um, uh, so we, 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 we deal with that because, so we have, we, we've got a hundred, more than a hundred now advisors uh, nationally from, from Edinburgh to, to Truro. Each of us are kind of a bit like me. We've all had seven lives. Uh, you know, I've had 10 years as a management consultant and 10 years as a, um, uh, as a digital marketing agency. So I've had so many clients and, and most of our advisors, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're senior people um, and they've all had lots of lives like this. So um, we, can, we can cover most areas with, with experience and skills, not everything, but I, I was challenged just before Christmas, um, could we help somebody start blueberry farming in Estonia? And we had three advisors with relevant experience. Now I figured if we can do that, we, we can come up with somebody with relevant experience for most things. You know, I've had clients in, in the funeral business, in cricket bats, um, in model agencies. And this, these are all true. Um, you know, you can't get any, anything more diverse than those, those three particular things. So um, I don't know for certain, Mark, but if you have something in mind, tell me. Um, perhaps off, off, off the call, um, and I'll tell you if we have somebody and, and send you their details, and, and if you're interested, meet them. Okay. Cool. Any other questions before we close up, guys? No. Jessica, I think we're probably done. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah, Thank no, you. really positive. Thank you. And we will connect you all with John. Um, so anything further to pick up, please do mention to him or again, if you want to ask me any questions about homegrown, please do as well. Thank you so much for coming along and um, yes, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Thank you, John. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you, everybody.